Hello, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today we'll be taking a look at how to create a timings report on your Minecraft server. Timings reports can be very useful for detecting what is causing lag on your server. It identifies lag in your world and plugins. Once you identify what's causing the lag, then you can resolve the issue. We recommend using a version of paper when creating a timings report. This will give you a nicer overview of the timings reports, as well as a bit more detail. As you can see, I'm using paper 1.16.1. This is currently the latest version of creating this video. My server is currently marked online, and I'm going to go to console. Now I will note that you can run this command in game. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll just do everything through the console. In order to create a timings report, you're simply going to type timings on you'll get a return of enabled timings and reset, timings reset. From here, we recommend waiting at least three minutes in order to get a more accurate reading. You should do this while your server is in its normal usage, for example, having players online or some sort of activity on your server that normally occurs. This will give you a more accurate view of what's happening on your server. Now, once you wait for three minutes or more to get your timings report, you're going to want to go back in console or in game and type timings paste. This will go ahead and generate a link for you to view the timings report. So what we'll go ahead and do is copy and paste this timings report into our browser. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're actually not going to be using this exact timings report. We're going to be using another timings report we've previously generated in order to show a more active server. So let's go ahead and take a look at the timings report. Now, at first glance, you may be a bit overwhelmed with the amount of information on the page. While there's a lot there, it's fairly simple if we break it down. You'll notice some general server information on the left-hand side, such as uptime, max players, max memory, as well as the version. Under the version, you'll notice a GC. This stands for garbage collection. Garbage collection is essentially memory management for your server. It'll free up memory that's not being used at the time. In this specific instance, the server is garbage collecting every five seconds while taking 1.3 seconds to complete. Well, as you can see, we have a gigabyte of memory to use, the server is struggling to find free memory due to the mass amount of entities taking up the majority of the tick. Because the server is running 1.16.1, we recommend at least 3 gigabytes of memory. You'll also notice that we have a red X mark saying not using a car's flags. However, this is completely normal and you should only be interested in changing this if you're on an extreme plan. If we go ahead and take a look at the graph on the right hand side of the page, we'll see numerous points listed. These are essentially data points providing you with information about the server during that specific time. You'll also notice we'll have a few different lines running through the graph. The green line is going to represent the server's TPS or ticks per second. Ideally, you'll want your server TPS to be 20. This means your server is processing entity movements and data 20 times per second. On the other hand, the red and orange line will represent TPS loss. This is how many ticks went above 50 milliseconds. Ticks will need to be below 50 milliseconds in order to occur 20 times a second. As you can see, we'll also have a dark blue data point representing the amount of players on the server at that time. Additionally, there's a light blue data point showing the amount of entities. The two other yellow and purple data points will show tile entities and the amount of chunks loaded. You'll also notice this blue bar underneath the graph. We can narrow or expand this bar to a specific point in the graph in order to show the issue below. For example, you'll notice in the graph we have this dip down to 17.1 TPS. If we want further information about why this occurred, we can simply narrow down this graph to this specific data point, and it's going to show us exactly what's happening down below. We'll be able to expand these categories below in order to get more detailed information. The first part is going to show the total tick this took up on an average across every tick. The second part will show that, but when it did run, how long did it take? For example, if we had something that ran 60 milliseconds, but it only ran twice out of 8,000 ticks, it's really nothing to worry about. If we go ahead and expand Minecraft full server tick, we'll be able to see exactly what is causing it. However, in order to do this, we may need to expand it a bit further in order to find out what's happening. So as you can see, I've now expanded the do tick, and we see tick entities is taking up 314.32% of tick. Let's expand that once more, and we'll see entity tick. We'll expand that, and notice that tick entity is taking up 285.6% of the tick. If we scroll back at the top, you can see if we hover over one of these data points, at this point in time in the data, we had 2,572 entities. So from here, we can identify that this may be causing a bit of performance decrease on our server. 
Additionally, we have the entity squid, entity item, entity dolphin, and entity cod taking up a higher percentage of all of the other ticks. Because the entities are taking up a high percentage of ticks, we can look at a few different options we may have, such as installing a plugin that may decrease the amount of entities we have, such as clear lag. However, like mentioned previously, the main reason this server is having issues is because of the low amount of memory it has allocated to it. Back at top here, we have a few other options. We can search from total, average, count, as well as choose lag or all. If we choose all, it's going to show us all of the results. However, if we choose lag, it's going to filter all of the results by what's causing the most amount of lag. As mentioned previously, as entities is an issue for the server, we could go ahead and try to lower the view distance in server properties so that less entities get loaded. Another option is to perhaps try a mob stacker plugin. This will take nearby entities and put them into one entity to lower the entity count in that specific area. We have a few other options in the tabs here. We have regions, which will cover, as it says, 512 blocks around the coordinates, and we can go from world, to world nether and to world end and if we expand one of these we can kind of see the amount of entities within that specific uh, set of coordinates if we go to config we'll be able to see some information regarding the server and the system config uh, also information regarding spigot bucket and paper by expanding one of these drop downs in the plugins tab we can see how plugins are affecting our server it's going to list that same count as we saw back in the timing section. In this specific server, we have DynMap installed, Slime Chunk, as well as Disable Item Despawn. If we expand this, we can see exactly what processes DynMap is creating on our server and that may affect server performance. This will also apply to Slime Chunk, as well as Disable Item Despawn. We can also filter results by the search bar. For example, if we were to type Entities, this will show all of the entities in those search results, and we can expand based on the results listed. That's going to wrap up this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join the Pebblos Discord, and we'd be more than happy to help you there.